lecture i will discuss about some important points about this semiconductor material that is what is the semiconductor then what are the different types of semiconductors available and what are the applications of these semiconductors that is depending on the application we have to use different different types of semiconductors so what is a semiconductor so it is a material which is having some electrical conductivities lies in between metals and insulator that is in metals we are having so many number of carriers which we carries the current that is the conductivity of this metals is very high whereas in insulator there is no carriers to carry the current that means the conductivity of this insulator is simply zero there is no current possible in this insulators whereas in metals the moment we give some energy the current will flow right but whereas in semiconductor the conductivity will varies depending on different different mechanism so we can vary the conductivity in semiconductors right now that is this one the conductivity of these uh, semiconductor materials can be varied by changing either temperature or optical excitation and impurity content now temperature is if i increase the temperature for the different types of semiconductor materials we can increase the conductivity of that particular material that is also we have to see how the uh, the conductivity of the semiconductors are varying with this temperature next what is this op optical excitation means if i incident some light on these semiconductors the conductivity will change that is when we incident some light on the semiconductors some electrons holes pair will be generated due to this uh, electron and hole there is a conductivity of the current right how the what is a electron what is a hole that we need to discuss anyway now what is the impurity content is so when you add some impurity to the semiconductors so we can uh, able to uh, produce some electrons or holes again when the electrons are moving or holes are moving the conductivity will increase or we can say current is flowing right so that is about the semiconductors now, now what are the available semiconductor materials in this uh, periodic table is so semiconductor materials are found in column 4 or we can say fourth group and neighboring columns of the periodic table now particularly column 4 elements are the semiconductors materials and we can make the compound elements using some neighboring columns also now if i see the periodic table of the elements so we have seen this type of table in our 10th class or maybe in uh, 10 plus 2 so this was the uh, periodic table of the elements so it will have so many group there is a 1 to 8 groups are there but among this we can pick some group of elements which will behave like a semiconductor materials right now these are some group of elements which we have taken from the periodic table that is second group third fourth fifth and sixth group now particularly the fourth group elements will behave like a semiconductors directly the silicon and germanium but we can make some compound elements using second and sixth third and fifth and we can combine the silicon and germanium to become a compound semiconductor so first we will discuss what are these uh, elements and what are the atomic numbers so the second group is having zn means zinc and atomic number is 30 then cd means cadmium atomic number is 48 then third group elements are boron aluminium gallium indium and these are the atomic numbers that is 5 13 31 and 49 next fourth group elements are carbon silicon and germanium and the atomic numbers are 6 14 32 then the fifth group elements are nitrogen that is seven atomic number phosphorus 15 arsenic as means arsenic 33 and sb means antimony which is having the atomic number 51 then the final is sixth group elements that is s means sulfur which is having 16 as atomic number and sc means selenium the atomic number is 34 and te means tellurium and the atomic number is 52 then among this who are these uh, compound semiconductors and what are who are the elemental semiconductors see germ s germanium and silicon are elemental semiconductor that is the single uh, silicon will behave like a semiconductor we can say single species single atom will behave like a semiconductor so that's why silicon and germanium are called as elemental semiconductors then what are the compound elements is combining two elements something like this i made a table again so these are the elemental and compound semiconductors so elemental semiconductors are silicon and germanium 
and uh, we can make the fourth group itself compounds that is silicon and this carbon if i make a compound then it will behave like a semiconductor also similarly silicon and germanium we can make one compound then third group versus fifth group similarly second group or the sixth group so these are the compound elements that is aluminium phosphorus aluminium arsenic aluminium antimony then gallium nitrogen gallium phosphorus gallium arsenide gallium antimony then indian phosphorus indian arsenic indian antimony so generally among this so more frequently we will use is this one gallium arsenide and sometimes gallium nitride then indian phosphorus and maybe indian arsenic also sometimes but uh, remember the gallium arsenide so we will have to discuss this gallium arsenide because we have to use this gallium arsenide in the, the light emitting diodes then similarly we can make this a uh, second and uh, sixth group compounds that is zinc and sulfur zinc and selenium and zinc and tellurium similarly cadmium sulfur cadmium selenium and uh, cadmium tellurium right so these are some compound semiconductors right now we will see where we have to use different different types of semiconductors so for which application which semiconductor will be suitable now we will see the applications of different types of semiconductors so germanium was the first semiconductor which was used for this uh, making transistors and diodes when the semiconductor uh, concept was developed but the silicon semiconductor is now used for all the majority electronic devices like rectifiers transistors and integrated circuits so because of some reason because silicon is abundant in nature silicon is freely available in the nature so that silicon is nothing but sand right now what are the compound elements are used is the compound elements are used in high speed devices so whenever we want high speed devices we have to go for the compound semiconductors devices requiring the or we can say some emission and absorption of light so something like this so if i need the light emitting diodes or photodiodes which will absorb the light or we can say it will emit the light so what are the different compounds we use gallium nitrogen or nitride or gallium phosphorus and gallium arsenide are more common in light emitting diodes so these are the compound elements using for either high speed devices or we can say requiring the emission of and uh, emission or absorption of lights right next one is so when we make we can make like a three element compounds also and four element also that is ternary and quaternary compounds such as see ternary means gallium arsenide phosphorus and uh, the quaternary elements or compounds are indium gallium arsenide phosphorus can be grown to provide added flexibility in choosing some different uh, material properties that is uh, uh, the example is aluminum gallium arsenide used in semiconductor lasers so when we want to develop semiconductor lasers we have to use like a ternary or quaternary compounds right as a semiconductors then next one is the fluorescent materials such as those used in television screens so nowadays uh, the lcds or leds there we have to use some materials which is compound element compound semiconductors that is made up of second and sixth group elements such as this is zinc and sulfur one more applications where we use compound semiconductors are light detectors so which are made with this uh, indium antimony and cadmium selenium so these are the compound semiconductors which will be used in light detectors right and uh, one more application of here is an important microwave device so that which is which was the gun diode so this gun diode is usually made up of gallium arsenide or indian indium phosphorus right so if you see if you, uh, if you recall the microwave labs so who will generate this microwaves is nothing but gun diode so gun diode is made up of the semiconductor compound material that is gallium arsenide or indium phosphorus right so these are some uh, applications and in each applications we have different different types of semiconductors right we will introduce some uh, term which is called doping this is very very important uh, concept in this uh, semiconductors right but before that we'll uh, discuss one more thing that is one of the most important characteristics of a semiconductor which distinguishes it from materials and insulators it is nothing but energy band gap 
right so depending on this energy band gap we can easily distinguish is it a semiconductor is it a metal or is it a insulator right so this is some example of this if it is a germanium semiconductor the energy band gap is 0.785 electron volt at 0 degree kelvin and if it is a silicon semiconductor the energy band gap is 1.21 electron volt at 0 degree kelvin so what is this energy band gap or what is the energy band diagrams of different types of semiconductors and metals and so on that we have to discuss but at this moment so to distinguish between this uh, metals and insulators and semiconductors so the one of the imp very important characteristic is energy band gap just remember that point Next. Next, we will uh, define what is doping. Now, I already told you the semiconductor conductivities can be varied by changing the temperature and optical excitation or impurity content. So, those three parameters we have to change if I want to change the conductivity. Next, we will define what is doping. Right? So, I already told you in the beginning of the class. Now, now we will define what is doping. So I already told in the beginning of the lecture the semiconductor conductivity. Now we will define what is doping. So in the beginning of the lecture I told you the semiconductor conductivity can be varied by changing three parameters either temperature or optical excitation or impurity content. So if I change one of these parameters we can change the conductivity of the semiconductor. So that is like this, the electronic and optical properties of semiconductor are strongly affected by impurities. That is, we have to add some impurities to make changes in the conductivity, which may be added in precisely in controlled amount. So we have to add these impurities in a precise manner and in a controlled amounts only. So we should not add these impurities as we like. So there should be some controlled amounts or we can say there should be some precise mechanism. right? So such impurities are used to vary the conductivity of semiconductors over wide ranges. So we can vary the conductivity over wide ranges, right? Like some, uh, so depending on this uh, impurities, how much impurities we are adding, depending on that, the conductivity will vary. Suppose we added the less amount of uh, impurities, we will get some less conductivity. If we add more and more impurities, we will get more and more conductivity that is more and more current actually so we can vary the conductivity of the semiconductors over wide ranges if we are adding these impurities in a controlled amounts or precise manner right so, so this process of adding this uh, impurities is called doping generally so that is like this this process of controlled addition of impurities called doping right so what is doping you have to add the impurities to the semiconductor to control the or to vary the conductivity of that semiconductor. So this is about some brief introduction about the semiconductor materials. So that is what we discussed so far is what is a semiconductor and what are the different types of semiconductor materials available and what are the applications of for different different types of semiconductors. Then we discussed what is doping. right? See, we have to remember all these uh, points because when we are learning something, first we should know what are the applications of those you know, concepts, right? So that's why I introduced a semiconductor and I introduced what are the different types of uh, semiconductor materials, then what are the applications, that is which applications we have to use which semiconductor. Next lecture, we'll start with this uh, energy band diagrams for different types of materials like what is the energy band diagram in metals and what is the energy band diagrams in insulators and what is the energy band diagram in semiconductor etc right